Welcome to The One Who Seeks, where you are the one who seeks. My name is Tara. I am your intuitive tarot reader. I use tarot as a tool to open up the channels of your intuition. By tapping into your unawakened subconscious, you will answer the questions that you seek. I am not a psychic, although it may seem like it sometimes. Take what resonates and leave the rest. Always remember, the freedom of choice is your power. Only you can make it happen with your actions. What are you seeking? Hello and welcome to the one who seeks. Where you are the one who seeks. What are you seeking? Just woke up, so I'm trying to get a read in here. I'm in my meditative state. Having crazy dreams last night, super vivid, ongoing, all night long. Oh, a piece of hair in there. Get it out. Okay, here I have my raw ruby. Another birthday gift from my second mother. It's going to join us for this read. So I would like to invite in all the loving angels with good intentions for your best good, for the good of others, for this collective reading. This is timeless. Take what resonates and leave the rest. Okay, I'm going to spray the protection spray. And that candle is going crazy. Lift up my thing, I don't want it to burn. All right, so starting off real smoky, and now it's uh, getting calm. All right, let's see here. Spirit, what do we need to know today for this collective reading? Okay, 34 in the world, not of the world. Oh, so interesting. I just had a conversation with my soul sister about this and how uh, we're not really of this world. The seven, the spirituality. How we are all humans here who made soul contracts to come here to teach the world a lesson to be um, the love and the light of this world. That our spirit is something else. Okay. And her hair here has all these like bubbles on them. It almost looks like octopus tentacles. She's got all these fish swarming around her. She is like part of this river. Okay, 29, seeing the true you. Wow. Okay, she's like in this lily pond. There's actually a teacup back here on one of the lilies and she's sitting in this fancy chair looking into the water at the reflection of herself. And a uh, sacred fool, 40. So that's an 11, which is a two. It's about union. It's about alignment. It's about um, 
coming together. 40 um, is foundation that is guided, guided by God, by source, by light. Okay, and um, she is playing with this puppet on strings. It almost reminds me of like the devil card. Uh, you are being guided, but this is uh, not by the devil. This is by source. This is good loving energy that is guiding you here. Um, and I think that sometimes I think we feel like the fool or we look like the fool in this world. Uh, she is um, feeling a little vulnerable. Uh, you know, she doesn't have a shirt on here. She does have some like lingerie stockings. It's really cute. Uh, feeling good about yourself. You know, like when you, you dress well and you, you look good, you feel good. So even then she's only got like kind of a part of a an outfit on here and it looks like maybe she this is like her top here that she has pulled down to expose herself all right and this puppet here that she's playing with it's kind of like ah, hmm. yeah i don't know you know with its hands up like that um i think i actually want to read this one the sacred bull this is Sacred Rebels. Oh, it opened up right to it. Page 156 and 157. Okay. The Fool is a great rebel, able to thwart convention and tell the truth without restraint. Your heart is a wonderful, powerful, sacred, sacred fool. It cares not for the right ways to do things. It cares not for what the mind says is real and not real. I'm gonna turn off the air. It lives according to an inner wisdom that cannot be dedicated to or controlled by anything. It loves, it lives, and it is what it is. Okay, this oracle heralds a time now or imminent when you will feel inspired, alive, and passionate for what you can offer to the world. It says to you, don't try to be appropriate. Don't try to be socially acceptable and worry about what others may think about what you are doing. Just be. If you want to wear a mad hat whilst doing so, fine. The sacred fool in you is willing to leave behind what has been because it no longer feels right to stay attached to it. The sacred fool in you trusts life completely. It will never occur to this part of you to try to outsmart life or resist its flow. It recognizes that the mind is a monkey puppet on strings. More often than not, it is conjoiled into fear when it could be playfully dwelling in the radical spontaneity of life. So the sacred fool in you urges your mind to let itself be pulled into joy by your heart strings, 
not into fear and doubt by the controlling machines of mass media. This oracle brings you a message. It's time for you to play. It's time for you to let life happen in a completely unreserved, unscripted way. The more bizarre, left of field, unexpected, and apparently ridiculous, the better. This might not feel safe or appropriate at first. That is okay. That is good, actually. It is a sign that you are breaking with your own self-imposed con conventions. conventions. It is time for you to move beyond them now because a bigger life adventure is calling to you. <clears throat> this is a wonderful news. It is the desire of life to operate more radically <clears throat> excuse me, through you so that you become the conduit through which miracles and crazy wild synchronicity can occur. You are becoming more electric. You are more plugged into the apparent randomness of life. Apparent because there is a refined intelligence behind it all. The sacred fool goes with this without having to understand any of it, which is good. Trying to access even one genuine glimpse of life, unfathomably, genius would probably make one's head explode. As you take this journey, you may find that people around you are challenged. You might unconventionally cause them to rethink the way they live their lives. They may question whether the way they are living is the only way for them or even the best way. At first, they may react rather than take responsibility. The sacred fool in you doesn't engage with this. It is what it is and it raises and falls and it will as it will. It doesn't stop you from your merry dance of unconventional being. If you find yourself being making choices that have others questioning your sanity, then you are right on course. <laughs> you may feel that you are quite possibly going insane, but you are not crazy. You are just approaching enlightened awareness. There is a moment sometimes, a rather long one, when we wake up to life, shed our attachment to mass opinion, and float in a completely different state of being. We might find that no one is really able to understand or connect with us to the point that we question our state of mind. Stay with it. Stay with that. It will pass. You will eventually see that you are becoming sane in an insane world. The tables will turn and you will gain great inner freedom and creative juice. Whew. Wow, you like hit me so hard. Crying now. <laughs> sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> Stay on your path. Stay on the journey. Remember to take nothing too seriously and it will all work out perfectly. Healing process. Say... I call on the sacred full of unconditional love. Please help me access your lightness of spirit, your wisdom, and your ability to exist in the truth, in the heart of truth. To be powerful without becoming attached or obsessed by power. I honor your vision. May I see and know so truly and be free. I choose of my own will, free will, to give myself absolute permission to just be myself now and always through unconditional love, mercy, and compassion. So be, so be it. Wow. Oh, wow. That hit me so hard. I mean, I do, but I didn't think that would do that. Once you have repeated the above, imagine that any invisible chains or shackles that have 
held you captive in any way are falling away from you. Right? Yeah. That devil energy. You might make a clunk as they hit the floor. You might feel freer than ever before. However strong or subtle, your reaction to this is perfect for you at this time. Shake your arms and your legs and your body. Once you are all shaken out, feeling more relaxed and hopefully just a little bit silly in a playful way, you have completed your healing process. Wow, okay. Shaking it out. Oh, man. Whew. Oh, guys. This is so weird because I literally just had this conversation with my soul sister about this and how everybody thinks that I'm crazy um, that's around me. <laughs> you know, my family, maybe even my friends. Um, And it's because I'm trying to protect them and they don't seem to understand that and um, don't understand my sensitivity to things and how I feel about the world and uh, structure and the way things are going right now. Um, I'm really trying to guide them and show them another way and have them open up their eyes. Um, but not everybody's willing to do that. Right? But it's just so weird because we just had this conversation and um, I was talking to her for like four and a half hours on the phone the other day and I didn't even go to bed until like 4 a.m. after talking to her. Um, and we were talking about a lot of different things that are going on in the world, uh, especially with child abuse, um, sexual abuse, and, uh, it's really heartbreaking. Um, yeah, you know, all the traumas that we went through in life and, uh, you know, talking about traumas of other people that we don't, you know, necessarily know, um, I've heard stories from in groups of all the pain that we go through and how many years it takes for us to heal afterwards. All along trying to conform to this crazy world. That doesn't make any sense. Um, because we are not really beings of this earth, right? We're seeing our true selves. Um, you know, we are the lions, we are not the sheep. That's what my soul sister kept saying. So, you know, maybe some of us, some people fear us, I feel, uh, because of our majestic sense and knowing of this world. And a lot of people don't understand that because they're sheep and they're just following along with what people tell them to do or what the government tells them to do or what their job tells them to do. It could be anything, a spouse, a friend, a parent. Um, and, um, you know, I'm really trying to find myself and who I really am and why I always feel trapped in this body, in this world, with some of the people that are around me. <clears throat> wow. Okay. <sighs> so, on the bottom there, I just saw Capricorn, um, which is my opposite sign as a Cancer. Right, so it's like the opposites attract kind of feeling. <clears throat> ah, I had so many crazy dreams last night. Like I said, it was just ongoing and ongoing. And um, 
one of my old friends from high school. I might even have been friends in junior high a little bit too. Uh, Jolly Rose. Hi, babe. Um, yeah, I haven't really talked to her in a long time. She is on my um, social media. So I do see what's going on in her life um, through that. She seems to be doing really great, and I love that. Um, but she was in my dream, and uh, I was talking about how we needed to hang out, and you know, really soon. And she said, "Yeah, let's go to Bodega Bay." She has like a um, family home there, or something like a vacation home. You know, I don't know if this is really true. I don't know if she actually has a family home in Bodega Bay. Uh, in my dream, she did though. And we had, you know, m throughout my dream, we were already there. Um, but we were there with a bunch of other people and I kind of wanted one-on-one -on -one time with her. And as I'm talking to her, I am like in this flower shop. I believe my grandmother was there. Um, the other person, I might even have been Priscilla Wilson, one of my managers, um, back in 2017, 2015 to 2017, um, he was always really supportive of me, uh, in my journey and felt a lot of love from her, but, um, they were in this flower shop, kind of like running it and the flowers, like the flower petals were coming alive and they were like walking on the table and they were really colorful. It was like the petals that fall off of your plant, you know, as it's like growing and that particular leaf dies or that particular petal falls off because it's planting its seed. Um, we're walking around. And we were just kind of, um, it was normal for us, you know, as I'm talking to Jolie. It was totally normal. It wasn't like something out of the, uh, the norm to happen. Um, although at the same time, I was kind of like, whoa, this is crazy. Like, what's going on here? But it really was normal. And um, they were just so beautiful and had this essence to them of like pure love and beauty right and um in the same dream I kept like writing letters like love letters to this guy in my dream that was like never really around in my dream though um it was like a forbidden love. And that is someone I know too, but I'm not going to name. Because it is a forbidden love. Okay. It's a 12th house there. We have third house connection or I mean, connection communication see I don't even know why I said that it just you know it's in my brain I guess it's what wanted to come out so um, the connection in communication we'll say and this is a uh, 41 so equals a five that's changes Okay, we have first house arrival, 39, it's a 12, it turns into a 3, and that is um, creativity. Okay, and we have the seventh house relationship. Okay, then we have these hands holding each other here. 
And there are, and I'm kind of tied up with this ribbon, like a gift, like a bow. But, you know, and it falls right under this, like, um, the sacred fool of the puppet on strings, right? So I think that there is a time to communicate with somebody. I feel like this is a uh, a love partner. This could also be a friend. Um, this could also be family. And I think it is time for you to communicate how you feel. And stop being this puppet and worried about what they think or how they feel about what you feel. Because your emotions are um, legit. They are, they should be validated. Uh, people should listen when you say something about how you feel. And take that responsibility, like um, it said in the book there, like if you say something to someone, but they don't like take the action, maybe right away, they're not really processing it, or they're not taking you seriously, so nothing really changes. Um, There's like something hidden about this because, you know, you do see the hand here, but it is behind this like mandala kind of almost stained glass here. So you don't really see it. There is something that is wedged here between this relationship that you are, are bound together here though. You are bound, but there's something uh, pushing you apart. Okay, and this, this like stained glass window has like no color to it. There's colors coming from behind it, like a sunrise or a sunset. You know, like where this one actually has, it seems like colors in the window itself. This is peering through the window and the window itself is clear. So I feel like maybe you are being very clear about what you're trying to communicate of what you want to arrive, right? Because of who you are, who you truly are. And I think it's funny, the sacred fools out here, um, I've been hearing a lot of, you know, messages about being spontaneous and having more fun and letting that inner child out to play. Um, because I, for one, have always been in survival mode. I don't think I've ever been out of survival mode almost my entire life. Um, I do feel like I was able to play when I was really, really young, like maybe eight years old or younger, when my grandmother was around and very heavily um, placed into my life and taking care of me and being my best friend. You know, and that's really the last time I remember playing. Gosh, I'm just like so emotional today. It just keeps hitting me. Um, you know, I've been told several times by several people in my family that I have a stick up my ass and I need to pull the stick out and I'm not spontaneous enough. And it's because I'm stuck in the survival mode 
and I need to take care of everything all the time. You know, when I see others not taking care of their children or their pets, it it's infuriating to me. It's very sad to me. I feel like I need to be the one to step up and take over. And I have to be the responsible one. Because if I don't do it, I don't see that anybody else is going to. So. I'm feeling like I always have to protect them. To be something that is stable for them. Someone who is open and willing to listen to what they have to say, even if it sounds or seems crazy or unreal. That I have to believe what is in my heart, in my soul of what I feel, because I feel energy. I like, I can feel the truth, even if it's not spoken. Um, actions really do speak louder than words. I can't stand when somebody gives me empty promises. They say they're going to do something and they don't. Or they make me wait forever for it. Instead of doing it right then. If you say you're going to do it, do it right now. Let's do it. What are we waiting for? Time is precious. Don't have a lot of time on this earth. <coughs> you know, and when people do that, um, it makes you feel stuck. It makes you feel like you're not getting anywhere. Uh, it makes you feel frustrated. You know, and at the same time, You've got to be grateful for everything that you have, right? It's the only mentality that you can have in this world to keep going is to stop and be grateful for the things that you have, even if you've lost so much or don't have something in particular. You think about the things that you do have. And uh, not that your feelings about it are not valid but there is always somebody else out there who has it worse right so if you just think about that it makes it a little easier for you to be grateful for maybe your shitty situation okay to help you keep going to help you keep that vibration to keep you on that level of high vibe and don't ever lower yourself to somebody else's vibration. It is a horrible place to be. It keeps you small. Five of Wands. Three of Pentacles. Knight of Cups and Six of Wands. So here's that struggle that you've been going through. And how you have to climb that ladder, constantly fight to keep on going. There's no way down now. It's There's only a way up. You know, if you do go down, you're falling. You're going to hurt yourself. Reach for that passion. Reach for those stars, reach for that gift, that prize. Don't let anybody hold you down and use you to lift themselves up. Okay. 
Okay, we are all struggling here. Okay. Three of Pentacles is about creativity and coming together with a, a group of others who have that same vibration as you, have those same values and strengths that you do. All right, and we have the Knight of Cups, who is all about romance and, you know, dreamings. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Whoa, see, it's hit me again. I don't even know what's happening right now. <sighs> you can see that love letter there. Of some, some sort of romance, some sort of love that wants to come into your life. <sighs> and make your fantasies real. So that you can feel victorious and feel loved and feel on top of the world and have that passion and uh, share it with others. Okay, these almost look like, because all you see here is hands. It's not like you see bodies back here. It's just a bunch of hands. It kind of reminds me of like the depths of hell. Um, you know, people who are struggling that need your help. And you're here to teach them ways, right? You're here to save them from these shackles. I really feel like you need a lot of support here though, especially um, from your loved ones. You need to be people to see you for who you really are and not just this human shell. Wow guys. I don't know why I am so emotional right now. Eight of Wands. The Empress. Ten of Cups. And the Seven of Cups. All right, this is about bringing your passions together and the all-knowing of who you are. Ah, oh, sorry. The all-knowing of the world around you and how you need to nurture it. supposed to get karma's ashes in my the ring I had made today too my dog karma if you don't already know who the past 515 I feel like that you, um, so this is, um, somebody else that's coming in, right? To collaborate with you who has the same feelings as you do, has that same value system, has the same, um, visions that you do. 
that vibration of love and coming together. Um, I do feel like there's some confusion here. Of making choices. You know, um, releasing the fears, releasing the scary things from inside, allowing your emotions to flow. I mean, you have these little ladders here, like they don't even seem like they're really going anywhere. This one's like totally past this cup here and going into the ocean, into your emotions. This one is going on to this cup, but it's not all the way to the top. So there's still a struggle here of you have to climb because it's only gonna take you so far. With your emotions. And there is something else here that I can't really see, but there is like a drawing in there. forward here. <sighs> um, this is about family, this is about love happiness. I feel like this is even part of the guitar. It helps you string your guitar to play those notes. To have your full chakra. So this is somebody else that's coming into your life. That's going to help to align you and help you to release your fears and this feeling of not knowing what direction you're going in or being led in the wrong direction that's not really helping you. Okay, and they have um, a lot of loving energy to share with you. Five of Cups, Two of Pentacles, Six of Cups, wow, and the Knight of Swords, Nine of Swords. <sighs> yeah, you're sitting here and you're waiting for this person. And you, you do have this bowl of gratitude here as well that you're holding on to but at the same time I feel that you are wishing and you are praying for maybe something to leave your life so that this light can reach you and go into your heart because even though you do have all this stuff to be grateful for there are a lot of things here that are holding you back. And I feel like this is kind of almost like um, a full moon in here in this like deep dark hole of things that are unseen that are uh, maybe just a vibration, right? It's an energy, but it's not really a, a knowing exactly of what it is, of pinpointing of what it is. And there needs to be some balance here um, of like the opposites. Mm. 
you know, I feel like uh, you were really solid and um, need to shine light. Maybe this is how you're feeling. You're feeling a little foggy. Like you are there, but you're not really there. And this relationship that's going to come in here is going to make you whole. It's going to bring you treasures, right? Because this looks like a purse. And what do you keep in your purse? You keep your money, right? Your valuable things, the things that you need. Um, you know, sometimes you might just have tissues, right? To blow your nose. Um, you know, nail clippers. Things that you think that you might need um, anytime that you leave the house, right? Your valuables. And maybe you don't need to hold on to them so tightly. Um, she's spinning these like poi. You know, and this card always reminds me of Burning Man once again. Um, and uh, she feels like she's in a really meditative state. Right? She's kind of got that same look on her face here. Almost of worry. You're trying to balance these things out. You know, the solidity of society and how you really feel your light, which is slightly bigger. A higher vibration. This is like the source. This is like earth, right? And how you are in between. And the Six of Cups here is, you know, past lives is about growing up. And like I just said about my dream and, you know, old friends from back in the day, from 20 years ago. And how you were watching somebody grow. You know, with their family, with their loved ones. All the different stages of life. Okay, and then we have the Nine of Swords here, which is about like nightmares, right? And I'm talking about dreams. Um, and we have this bedpost back here. I don't know if you can see it from that far away. I don't know if you can see it anyway, because it's so dark in here. There we go. <clears throat> it's about, you know, like. Yeah, the things that are in your mind, the nightmares, the dreams, you know, even though I, my dreams kind of felt, it wasn't like a nightmare, but at the same time, it kind of was because I was not able to connect to this love that I had, this huge, great love that I had. And so, um, you know, all the things that were going on around me, there were a lot of other people around me as well. I was like at a, like a school or something like that, or like a camp. And I remember just trying to go into the bathroom to go to the restroom and there were just so many people, like I couldn't even get in. And they were all just kind of standing around and socializing and they were very busy beat and chittering and chattering you know all with each other it was very like chaotic right but then we have this this shining light here you know once again this bright kind of almost can't see it light with all this solidity And, you know, this is like how I feel right now. Like I'm waking up and I'm, you know, I don't feel like I had a nightmare. It just felt like a dream. 
you know, most of it was really beautiful and amazing. But there's that little aspect of it that is breaking my heart. And it's so faint and so subtle. I actually want to read this one. as the night. I read that as the night when I pulled it out. I am literally looking for the Knight of Swords right now. So I'm going to show you that card, which is like somebody running away or running towards something really quickly, like in a hurry, like there's an emergency. Right. Haste, streamlined, decision making, intelligence, wit, Determination, saving the day, pursuit of excellence, ambition, being assertive, success. In the shadow side, unfor unfocused and scattered energy, impatience, acting too quickly, the need for a logical solution, feeling held back. I did say that. By frustrating circumstances, stalling, being hard-edged and emotionally unavailable, unpredictability. I move quickly to help others and I do, as I do, my dream expands. <sighs> wow, that's like everything that I've been saying here. And I feel like that's why uh, I keep saying that as the knight. So here we have the nine of swords. The lights here, nightmares, worry, feelings of depression or anxiety, insomnia, fear, an opportunity to find courage, a time to focus on safety and the things that are going well in your life. Right? I was talking about being grateful for the things that you have, even though you do have all these things, right? That maybe are fearful because you're going down this tube that is unknown. This dark tube, shadow seer, uh, paranoia, deeply anchored fears, inability to think clearly, inner turmoil, negative self-talk, affecting self-esteem, and an opportunity to actively begin the healing journey, right? That's that right there. This is the active opportunity to heal. What's keeping you up at night, sweet seer? This card suggests a time in your life when negative thoughts are gaining momentum and when you may find yourself expending too much energy worrying about the future. Perception is everything, so don't allow negative self-talk to trip you up. If a pessimistic mindset spirals wildly out of control, it can lead to anxiety, stress, or depression. Even when your thoughts carry no truth. Are you imagining the worst instead of cultivating the best? Flip your perspective and send nurturing, loving thoughts to your situation to overcome any disrupting thoughts. Look to the light in your situation and notice that even the tiniest window of brightness can keep fear at bay. Use your light to expose the illusions and allow worries to dissipate and soften as bad dreams are illuminated for what they really are. I see my fears as the illusions that they are. Okay. 
So yeah, the situation here is definitely um, the struggle of coming together, right? Things that are unseen are the balance in the creativity and the world at large. And the action is having love love and romance and family and growth okay and the outcome of that is um being in the spotlight making the decisions to see what it is that you want to see releasing the fears and allowing the light to come through the emotions to flow without judgment and with action you know I feel like somebody else really needs to make a decision to show love to you for you to come out of this this fear, this nightmare. Okay, and um, the timing of this here I feel like is worldly time, right? Um, so cups is kind of a slow moving energy. It's not the slowest, but it is slow. It's months, so 10 months. So it may take 10 months for this to cultivate. Within 10 months, it's gonna happen in 10 months. Um, Still seems like such a long way away. Um, so that would be next May. So it'd be Karma's like one year death anniversary. You know, and April showers bring May flowers, right? Um, those, those flower, flower petals are really going to come alive in May, next May, 2025. And you're going to have beautiful music and you're going to have love and family and relaxation and a sense of... Um, Letting it out, letting it go, flowing with it, not letting it stop you, showing your true colors. All right, Spirit, <clears throat> any information about this? We need to know. Pallas, Athena, think. Okay, so this picture kind of pic um, reminds me of like a uh, Mardi Gras mask, like the mask that you wear. It also reminds me of a skull. We actually have a uh, horse skull outside our house here, and it looks very similar to that. Um, it's about 
shedding that that mask and growing from it because there are uh, plants here growing it looks like hair flowing and it's gray like we're getting older right we're getting older it's time to take off that mask and we have three again which is creativity and divine and uh, guided by the divine okay we even have like halo around a uh, rainbow halo around this full moon all right here's your rainbow you know you have your full moons here which is the unknown and it's being illuminated Sagittarius, expand. Okay, which is funny. My mentor, Mary Jo Crown Moore, uh, Soulful for Evolution, who I've been studying tarot with for the past six months and continue to study with, uh, is a Sag. <laughs> right? So finding that connectivity with others <clears throat> that will help you to grow and help you to be this fierce, bold being that is not of this earth, right? Because this is uh, half a woman and half of a, like a horse. Knowing that you're not really this human being it's stuck in this body and expanding that and shooting for the stars. Okay, nine is about um, things that are ending, things that have a lot of wisdom to it, you know, just before it's complete. Okay, oh, there's lots of them here, okay. Venus, beloved. I don't know if these planets here are the same. It's hard to tell. Um, 21, 3, creativity again. Okay, and it's all like locked up. It almost feels like this thing here, right? This is my grandmother's, right? This is a, a clock. This is a wind-up clock. Which is still set at five. Okay. Well, it looks like 5.56 here. Okay, you know, uh, your ancestors being protected with this beautiful gold and embellished, artistic, ever moving, and not just in one direction. You know, there's pollinators here, some pomegranate, some roses. It's like those petals that are coming alive. Neptune, vision, 26, eight. It's infinity, it's manifestation, right? It's bursting. It's uh, being in charge. Sun, source. Yeah, that's it that's being in the light that's happiness and it's funny that these two images are very similar to each other and how it's almost like the big bang right it went from it looks like ice these icy crystals to melting right and becoming these rays of light of gold It's also a nine. Wisdom. 
and the fifth house of passion all right and here we have the creativity and we have the petals that are falling off of this board and down and down and down okay seven spirit this is guided by spirit this is divinely guided and here we have that stained glass again that has no color in the glass itself but the light that's illuminated through it from that sunset or that sunrise in becoming creative and having that love and that passion for these plants for these flowers and seeing the beauty of it. Oh, careerist, dreamer of grand schemes, vision, cunning, uh, machination, aspiration. So I find it funny that this pops out as like the careerist, right? And there's like two sides of this person's self. This one feels like it's behind bars a little bit. It's like in this cage and it's red like the devil. And here we have this beautiful blue eye that's in the light, but it's very fierce still. Right, and um, I've been trying to get into uh, the paradise art center to be a teacher of um, tarot. I want to do soul collages, which is something I did with my family, with my grandmother, which is the tarot deck that I'm creating of these soul collages that my generation of women have created. And I feel like it's very abundant and I haven't heard anything back. Um, you know, I got one response saying that somebody was going on vacation and uh, CC'd me onto two other people, but I didn't hear anything from those people. So um, I don't know what's going on there. I gotta check back in. And it does kind of feel like, well, maybe because I wanna do something that has to do with tarot. And, um, you know, it's sort of a, a religious aspect. Maybe somebody is not into it, right? And they're rejecting it. And, uh, but it's what I really want to do. It's who I am. It's what I want to teach. And we have friend. Keeper of trust, companion, support, and sharing joy. Once again, there's my dog. Right? There's a lot of dogs in here. We have our dog growing. And karma keeps coming up. Right? That's your best friend. Somebody you can find in, can, can find in and they don't judge you. They always love you. Okay, they always support you. They want to do everything with you. They follow you around. They think you are the greatest thing on earth. Alright, let's get one of these. What else do we need to know? The magnitude of my power is always in the now. I got that one yesterday too, or a couple days ago. Okay, one more, please, spirit. One more. I kind of close my eyes with these ones because I can see <laughs> what they kind of say. Let's see. As I love and respect myself, I radiate love to all others. <laughs> yeah, that really does sum up what we've been talking about, right? Yeah, it's like this mirror image here of the, um, you know, if you look into two mirrors, there's one in front of you, one behind you, you get this effect. So I want to read this one first. The magnitude of my power is always in the now. It's madness to freak out about the future because it hasn't happened yet. 
it's not guaranteed. What happens if you shift your focus to the power you have in each moment? Steps turn into miles, which turn into globe trotting. Kisses into sexy time, which turns into babies. Words turn into pages, which turn into novels. Notes turn into songs, which turn into symphonies. Go slow, steady, and with intent. Right, we were talking about how slow this is going to be going and the timing. If you are, are really understood with enormousness of your power, you won't be scared of shit. As I love and respect myself, I radiate love to others. Love flows to you and through you at all times, feeling all of your new, unique little wrinkles, curves, organs, senses, bones, tissues, joints, wings, energies, and private party parts with harmony. Illumination and zest. Love yourself like you loved that tiny little creature you rescued when you were seven. Oh my God, right? I was just talking about how I never, I don't feel like I've ever been able to play since I was like eight or younger. And I didn't say it at the time, but I was thinking of all the, um, the frogs that were in my grandmother's backyard. And, um, you know, it was probably really fucked up, but we would stick the hose down in the holes of the concrete to kind of flood out their home so that they would all come out and they'd be hopping around all over the concrete of the backyard and I'd play with them, you know, and now that I think of it as an adult, I'm like, that's hella fucked up. Like I just totally flooded out their home, um, just for my own, <laughs> um, satisfaction of playing with these frogs, right? Uh -huh. But I don't recall any frog ever being harmed that I know of. But, you know, I was of that age. As you discover and appreciate the love within yourself and radiate infinite love to everyone else, you need it more than you know. They need it more than you know. I do need it more than I know, too. And then we have the infinity of love. Shining out the love. Okay. All right, well, uh, I hope you enjoyed your reading. Um, it was super emotional for me. I don't know if it was emotional for you at all. And how it corresponded with my, my dreams last night and my dog and my grandmother and my age and everything and how it just really resonated with me um to shine my love out and that's what i'm doing here with you is i am i'm shining out my love to you to awaken you to have you realize what what gratitude do you have in your life um even if you're in a dark time, to see that gratitude, to see that love, to shine the love, to take off the mask and be who you really are, because that's what we came here for, is to shine the love in this world of fear and hate and disgusting things. Be that light. Okay. If you would like a personal reading with me, please go to one who seeks not info. Get your swag. Um, and just see all the beautiful things that are going on here and how I'm creating this, this channel, this life, um, my love to share with others and uh, see all the baby steps that are happening to get there. This is not something that's happening overnight. As much as I really want it to happen overnight and just be done with having created this tarot deck and figuring out what my next direction is going to be and how do I show myself to the world and how do I stop caring about what others are saying or thinking or um, trying to tell me how I need to be and taking off that mask 
and just being creative and really looking into myself and knowing who I am on the inside, what my soul is, where I'm really from, and what I'm here to do. Okay, and you are here because you are part of that tribe. You are here to shine your light as well and to share with others and to be yourself and realize that you are not crazy no matter what people say. Your intuition is telling you something and you need to follow that. Okay, I love you all. Thank you for being here. Please share, like, and subscribe check out my website. Thank you. Bye. I want to thank you and our angels for being present for the messages that have come through in this reading. If you found this to be helpful, please like and share this content so others can benefit as well. Seek the subscribe button and don't forget to get notifications so you never miss a reading. The more love you share, the more love you receive. And you can find more love right here in these other videos. For more information about this channel, personal readings, swag, and donations, check the links in the description box.